Watch all episodes of Ice Pilots. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Bailey now. This week, Buffalo Joe races a piece of history that history forgot. The show begins. The water bomber crew sweats it out overseas what a waste. to try and keep Mikey's promise to a rock star. Bada boom, bada boom. And a rookie gets a lesson as dense fog pushes AJ to make a last second call. You're up. Your hats, boy. Well, this is the auto shop. This is where we do all the, the ground support equipment maintenance. Buffalo Joe McBride is gearing up for an unusual mission. Well, this is a snow plane. In a plane unlike any other in the Buffalo fleet. Snow plane means it rides on the snow, it doesn't have any wings. If it had wings, it would be in the hangar. It was built out of aircraft parts and aircraft construction. And it was built during the uh, 30s and 40s, mainly to travel across the prairies. Police use them, game wardens, mainly doctors going from farm to farm, midwiving, stuff like that. Snow planes opened up winter transportation on the prairies. Joe's is a fudge model. They were built between 1929 and 1956 and designed in Saskatchewan. Paul and Hay River had two of them, and so that's what sort of piqued my attention is watching him uh, drive his around. It's like getting in an airplane. You got to get in a little bit at a time. You can't get in all at once because it's not that big. Joe couldn't resist the chance to buy one when the chance came up. Yeah, there it is, just like that. You got a steering wheel out of a, out of a Ford truck, but all the gauges and switches are all out of aircraft. It's all aircraft construction, eh? It's an airplane without wings. If you put wings on it, it'd probably fly. It'd probably fly pretty good. You're gonna have to get, get a bigger one so I can get in and out of it. And the real heart of this machine is the power of an airplane. Most people like to use an aircraft engine because for the horsepower and torque, it's very light. It's not a heavy cast iron engine like, like an automotive engine. Joe's engine came out of an Avro Anson military training plane. It's a smaller version of the engines on Buffalo's Warbirds. Well, I'm just going to tighten the battery cables up, Joe, and let's see if it will start. And today, Joe and mechanic Gordy Pirro are firing up the snow plane for the first time since Joe bought it. Yes, sir. Please you take it out the refueler. The snow plane still needs a lot of tuning up, and they can't even run it at full power inside. But Joe's determined to take it out on the lake by the end of the week. We'll go over 100. Well over 100 mile an hour, I know, I know that. We're pushing all that power, not much weight. But stopping is another matter, because the one part the snow plane doesn't have is brakes. It's Friday morning at Buffalo. We're open for business. Usually in the morning, Rampy Chris Staples gets to head north. Oh, that's not good. Because this is uh, actually a fairly thick layer of impact ice. This actually can make flight very dangerous, so we got to take care of this before we can fly today. So. Chris has been roped into running Buffalo cargo. What he really wants to do is fly. So he comes in on his day off to help load the C-46 for a chance at some stick time. Like all Rampies, Chris is an aspiring pilot. He left Victoria, BC for Yellowknife and a shot at flying for Buffalo. Actually, I came up here uh, strictly on a whim. 
I can't really determine exactly when I decided I wanted to be a pilot. It's really as far back as I can remember. And one plane has grabbed his imagination, one of the most challenging in the world, the Monster Warbird C-46. The Curtis Commando C-46 was designed in 1937. It has a tall fuselage, fat tail, and a small rudder, making it difficult to control and earning nicknames like the Whale and the Curtis Calamity. Over 3,000 commandos were flying the skies of the world by 1945. Today, there are fewer than 10 still flying, three of them at Buffalo. For a young pilot who wants a challenge, there's no better place to be. I've had the uh, attitude and mentality that if I want something, you know, I work for it. Especially when it's something that you're passionate about, like for me, it's flying. If I can find a fast track to the C-46, I was going to take it. But this morning, Chris has learned there's a roadblock on that fast track. <laughs> Are you I mean, fair enough, I mean, if you need help, but it's just like, yeah. I'd like to get another flight in if I, I could, you know? Instead of co-piloting the 46, he's been demoted to pushing pallets on the DC-3. They need help on the 3, so they boot me off the 46. They got Travis on there, so that's enough help, apparently, so. I'm just going to go put my lunch in the other airplane. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the DC-3, I love the DC-4. You know, I think flying the scale with Joe would be a great experience, but I mean, I'm here for the C-46. Just really wanted to get a little extra time in the 46, you know? You know, he's got to shake it off and know that the next time, you know, it'll be better. But next time, Chris is in for another unpleasant surprise. Bitches. Just land in Istanbul. I think we're gonna go driving to Intermin. Not sure. Buffalo's water bomber crew is heading to a reunion in Adremit, Turkey. We meet again. Corey Dodd and Justin Simley have come all the way from Yellowknife to see an old friend. Yeah, this is the one we did the crossing the last time. So. Yeah, she's definitely been working. But it's bath. Last spring, Corey and Justin flew the CL-215 water bomber across the North Atlantic, when Buffalo leased two of the planes to the Turks for fire season. We flown like the world. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Amazing, eh? Great job. Welcome to Turkey. Now Buffalo needs to transport the planes to get them some much needed maintenance in the UK. I haven't seen this girl in Wow, no. And Mikey McBrien's come along to make that happen. But for him, this will be a whole new world. Today, dealing with customs, which means a time-wasting detour. Should be lost. So we're playing about three and a half hour flight? No, it'll be four, Mike. Four. I do the old zigzag, probably. Zigzag routine. It's too late. The problem with Mikey is he doesn't get out of the hangar, ever. What a waste. Just backtracking. Was, this is an awesome eye opener for him because he wanted to, you know, like plan, plan, plan this day, this day, this day, and it doesn't work that way. It's aviation. Mikey's upset that the crew has to head 1,200 kilometers in the wrong direction to clear Turkish customs. Yeah, hopefully we can get through customs in a day or two and get on our way. But, I mean, we're already six hours behind schedule now, so the, the show begins. <sighs> okay. You ready, Corey? Yep. I'm ready. Rock and roll. Hello, hello, no. So are we heading direct Izmir then, guys? For yeah, now? yeah. All set. Justin, Captain Nigel Clark, and the Turkish liaison set their course. Clear for takeoff, uh, runway 05, uh, Charlie Yankee, November. 50 knots. V1. Check. And VR. Here it up. Today, instead of heading towards the maintenance facility in Cardiff, Wales, the crew is heading in the opposite direction to Adana, where their second plane and crew are already waiting. Charlie, Yankee, 
Charlie, Yankee November is clear your zone to the south, uh, 10 miles. Charlie, Yankee November, affirmative, have a nice flight. Bureaucratic delays mean Mikey's carefully laid plans are slipping away. Plans to connect with his buddy, the rock star. Last summer, I was lucky enough to meet the legendary uh, rocker Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden. <laughs> Dickinson is lead singer of the iconic metal band. They call him the Human Air Raid Siren. But he bonded with Mikey over planes. Would you say that was the drama queen? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Bruce is a longtime pilot and captain of his band's Boeing 757. A few months ago, he toured Buffalo and tried out its vintage planes. Pull back, pull back, left rudder. Okay, I'll see what you mean. He even impressed the toughest captain at Buffalo, Joe himself. Yeah, you're doing good. Fantastic. You man. did a wicked job. <laughs> and he made Mikey an offer. We have uh, two airplanes. Um, that we really just need a space. Bruce Dickinson happens to have a space. That space is a mammoth aviation maintenance facility called Cardiff Aviation. And it's a lot closer than Yellowknife. Bruce is traveling on business, and Mikey's been trying to link up with him en route to Wales. His schedule right off the bat was thrown off, right from the get-go. You could tell he was getting stressed out. Okay, 105. Down, land. Heading into Adana, Mikey's hoping that they can clear customs quickly. But this wrinkle has changed their flight plans and route. We still don't know what stops we're going to make, where we're going to be. We're just hoping that the stars will align on one of the stops. Adana, here we are. Oh, that's it. Wow. Feel the heat, eh? Mine's Mike. My name is like a jacked on the planet. Yes. Tomorrow will be Customs Day. At least it's supposed to be Customs Day, but Corey and Justin have been tied up in Turkish red tape too many times. And they know better than to put much faith in planning. You think it'll be done tomorrow? I think. Yes. That would be the fastest mm -hmm. dealing with Turkish customs yes. I've ever seen. I will, I will. See what happens tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the day of uh, reckoning. So I think it's the start of our adventure today, eh? It's another early morning on the Buffalo Airways ramp, and Chris Staples is supposed to be heading north today. So I looked at the weather uh, this morning, and it looks like pretty good up the, up the valley today. So. Chris lost his last shot at flying the C-46, and he's determined to get his flight time today. I'm getting on this airplane. No ifs, ands, or buts about that. I don't anticipate any problems. Hey, Chris, how's hey. it going, buddy? What's the with you? But Captain A.J. DeCoste has some news Chris won't want to hear. We got four people, a full, full airplane. Hey, Chris, are you coming today, or since Matt's coming, are you staying here? What's that? I don't know. I just thought I was coming. I just saw on the board that Matt needs an hour and a half of training. Really? Oh, jeez. Well, that's a huge bummer if that's true. One of the other junior co-pilots will be taking Chris's seat. You no, know, it's really frustrating to you like, find a babysitter and yeah. grab a lunch. But Chris isn't giving up. He calls Buffalo's operations manager to plead his case. Okay, right on. Hey, hey man, am I, uh, am I on this plane today or not? Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. All right, I'll talk to AJ. Thanks a lot. All right, so it's a go. All right, boys, let's go flying. Glad to be aboard? Absolutely, always. Co-pilot David Alexander and mechanic Adam Smith are joining AJ for this trip up the Mackenzie Valley. Tower Buffalo 308 is ready to go. Buffalo 302 Tower. Left turn out, wind 280 at 5 to 10, clear for takeoff on way 34. Left turn out, clear for takeoff 302. Left 30, back, pressure golf zero turn.
And once the freight is delivered, Chris might just get to fly the empty leg back home and get some time to try learning this beast of a plane. With either, it's just uh, all the little things that uh, really just takes years and experience to, uh, to really grasp. Today, the weather is turning ugly up the valley, and Chris could get a lot more experience than he signed up for. In the back of the buffalo yard, it's time for a moment of truth. Buffalo's auto shop mechanics, led by Gordy Puro, are doing final checks on Joe's vintage machine. What we got is a very old snowplane. The snowplane packs a 450 horsepower punch, a Pratt & Whitney Wasp engine, pulled from a British design World War II training plane. Contact. There's music in those roaring exhausts. It's a symphony of singing steel. Early in the war, the Avro Anson also served as a bomber and flew coastal patrol. We're going to try and start this up. No breaks, nothing. You know, hold to the floor and hope for the best. Now it's time to see how power meant for a 6,000 pound airplane. Just stand clear of the problem, okay? Okay. Runs at full throttle. We changed the mag points on it, and we put a new fuel filter on. We did the same thing you do with an airplane engine to get it going again after it's set for a season. If Gordy gives the thumbs up, Joe can finally take the snow plane out for a spin. The verdict is in. And tomorrow, a snow plane will roar across Great Slave Lake for the first time in decades. Three zero two is thirteen miles to East uh, Swing Field in four minutes. Can we get your advisor, please? In the air over the Mackenzie Valley, the C forty six crew closes in on Delaney, and Chris, the extra member, is brushing up on the plane's standard operating procedures, itching for his chance to fly. The steady is going good there. Uh, yeah, I'm just going through the SOPs, emergency procedures, stuff like that. Good. Yeah, it's pretty keen, I'm not for sure. But as AJ prepares for his approach, the weather is taking a nasty turn. Delaney, check each in the trees, all clogged here. Freezing fog, mid south looks like about a mile. What do you say about clogged? There's a fog, a lot fog. A bank of fog below the plane is obscuring the runway from view. Okay, we'll go down no lower than 1,000 feet. I'm going to take the props up 2,300 on the approach. Okay. AJ will have to descend through the fog and find the runway. If they still can't see the runway when they get down to the minimum altitude of 300 feet, they'll have to abort the landing fast. I'm out of the mess. It'll be uh, straight out. I'll get the props, the trim, set the power. Flaps are going to have to board and get the gear up. Any questions? No, all right, good. Chris is about to get a real lesson in northern flying. Buffalo 302 is three mile final, two six. They're hitting the cutoff point. AJ needs to see the runway right now. With the ground approaching fast. All he can see is fog. Not the best approach, eh? Oh, not at all. Buffalo 302 is two mile final. Captain A.J. DeCoste is descending through thick fog towards Delaney. Not the best approach, eh? Oh, not at all. He has just seconds to find the runway and commit to his landing. No idea or not or aboard and get back to a safe altitude. I think I may flop up to a quarter. AJ makes his call. You're up. And ditches the landing. Go power one. Yeah, dude. Buffalo 
The overshoot has been a big first for Chris Staples, who's eager to fly this plane himself. He'll get his chance before the day is over. Do you want to go to uh, Toledo, then back to Delany? Yeah, we'll go to Wells, Toledo, then go back to Delany. Right. Hopefully, the fog will burn off this afternoon. In Turkey, the water bomber crew needs to get their planes to Wales. She's a dirty girl, that's for sure. <laughs> when we start seeing, seeing oil on the, on the horizontal stab, it's, uh, it's time to do some, some maintenance to the engines, because they're leaking pretty good. But the mission is still stuck in custom snags, and temperatures are rising. Yeah, it's and it's only 10 to 38. All their plans are falling apart. Maybe you're going to live or what? Fine. I'll hug anything. Going over to Turkey was a culture shock for me because uh, they're a little bit, let's solve this tomorrow. Um, and we we're like, well, no, tomorrow we want to be gone. Oh, yeah, no problem, no problem. Everything's no problem, right? But nothing happens. And this was our whole point in why we had to get the airplanes out of Turkey because we can't do maintenance there. Being held up five days here or 10 days here, it just, it doesn't work. You know, so we had to, that was our biggest thing was we had to move those airplanes out of there. That's not a full to load, that's a half load. Well, it's the turkey world, so this will take us probably a couple hours to load this up. And so far, nothing is moving quickly, including Buffalo's load of spare parts. Let's load this guy. This is what Did you take on the whole thing? Are you going to be out here today? Uh, no. And Mikey's big plan to meet Iron Maiden frontman Bruce Dickinson is a big question mark. You know what, it's not every day you get this many missed calls from a rock star. Hi, Mikey, it's Bruce. Have you found your charge? Uh, just trying to find out what's going on. Give me a shout. How did you Yeah, Bruce has uh, basically cleared up his schedule. And I can imagine someone like Bruce would have a crazy schedule, so he's cleared it up for us. We really lost our chance for Bruce to uh, meet us in Turkey. Hello, Mikey, how's it Turk? Oh, Turkey's, uh, at least it's warm here. Uh, we're in the Dana. Are they showing any signs of letting you out yet? Customs is supposed to be here in about 20 minutes, but they've been telling us 20 minutes for the last two days. But Bruce is still willing to try to meet up. I could try and make sure I get down to the boat, and I can probably still jump on the airplane with you. Yeah, that'd be absolutely perfect. OK. Let me, uh, let me see how that works out. OK, sounds good. Thanks, Bruce. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Limoges, France is still three stops away, but Justin has new hope that they might get moving soon. Customs is done. That was customs. In about 20 minutes, they're gonna bring the fuel truck over. So maybe two or three hours from now, we'll get the fuel truck. The bottom line is we told, we, we showed up here yesterday at eight o'clock in the morning to get fuel for the airplanes, which is now like, we're almost time to leave here again. We still don't have fuel. So that's why I don't get my hopes up. Until the planes are fueled and in the air, none of the crew can really get their hopes up, especially Mikey. On Great Slave Lake in Yellowknife, Operation Snowplane is in full force. Okay, Eric, drive ahead. Gordy and the team are getting the plane ready. And the pilot is on his way to make a little history. Y'all I probably have seen a snow plane on a bay for 30, 40 years since, or maybe even longer than that. So that's what we want to try out today. And Joe's son, Rod, the family's biggest gearhead, wants to see how this airplane engine powered relic compares to his modern snowmobile. Grand Touring at its best. Clear. Just around here. Before it even travels a foot, the snow plane's attracting a lot of attention on the lake. People just want to come down and see what all that noise was. And rightfully so, it is, uh, it is something you don't see that often anymore. It's got an airplane engine for power and no brakes. 
so Joe's passenger is in for a wild ride. It's a quite a ride at Hammond Arc because the, the lake's still pretty rough, so it, it's not like it's torsion bar, spring steel, air ride. It, it's it'd be a pretty shaky in there. And on this plane, Joe is still a rookie pilot. Usually, he doesn't really put a scratch on anything with wings. If it doesn't have wings, he usually hits every stump or rock or chalk in the yard. So we'll see how he does. That looks like an aircraft engine. Oh, yeah, that's an airplane. Yeah, we built, it's an airplane with no wings. Jump in, I'll take it for a ride. You want to take me for a ride? How's it going? Hey, good. There's only one spectator who's still a little skeptical. Anytime you put a radial engine on skis with no wings, it's kind of waste of thrust. Like, I mean, your intent usually is to get airborne so you can get away from Earth. We're just going to drag this thing around in the snow. So Rod decides to test Joe's vintage machine against his own state-of-the-art snowmobile. The snow plane is giving Rod a good run for his money. Until... Got a fuel. Should have checked the fuel myself, but we had been out a little longer than we anticipated. We don't have a gas gauge in there. We thought we had more fuel in than we did. Yeah, we're gonna have to go get some gas. I'll just wait here. Go see if Gord got any gas. If not, I'll have to tow it. Until Rod gets back, Joe and the snow plane are stuck. In the sky above Delaney, Buffalo C-46 crew is making a second attempt to land. Hey, you got runway 12 AJ's made his other stops, hoping the conditions here would be cleared up on the way home. And he's letting his young co-pilot David handle the landing. And landing the C-46 never gets easy. A little bit of power, 80 knots. With that 46, you gotta keep flying it and just keep practicing. This is your flaps coming down here. Good on, buddy. Now can do it. Come along, good. Okay. Chris Staples has come along today hoping for his own shot at proving himself in the right seat. Okay. Well, yeah, it's my chance to get in the hot seat, eh? So better than just sitting there watching everybody else do it, read the manual, which is important. But... I think, you know, one inch in the C-46 weighs about as much as the airplane I was flying before. You know, it's, it's definitely nerve wracking. Everybody who starts on the 46, it's always a hard time. It's always hard to do. Now that the plane is empty, Chris will get to face that challenge. And AJ's letting Chris tackle the takeoff. It's all clear on the left. All clear on the right. You're nervous just because you want to do a good job and you don't want to do the wrong thing. Okay, crew briefing here. Roger, it beat uh, 89, 93, 49 inches. You don't want to say the wrong thing. I like to call it 30 inches of power. Or just give the wrong impression. 3.08, 9.5. Yeah, copy all that, no problem. Roger. But before he even gets off the runway, Chris is making his first mistake. All right, you're 30 inches. Roger. Taylor on into wind. Fighting wind on the runway, Chris is using his brakes to keep the plane straight. Right. 
crosswinds can push an accelerating plane off the center line of the runway. So the pilot needs to raise the aileron on the side of the wind and lower the one on the opposite side. If a pilot applies the brakes to fight the wind, he'll be dangerously slowing the plane down right when it needs speed for takeoff. Even though Chris maintained enough speed this time, AJ wants to break this bad habit. Uh, so did you get a little bit of break to get your straight again? Is that what you did? Uh, you did, you were on the brake a little bit, okay? I was? Yeah, so I did uh, feel it. Chris is off to a shaky start. Firm about to nine? Yeah, we'll go up to 9,000. He'll have to sharpen up and prove himself before his day and his big chance are over. Out on Great Slave Lake in Yellowknife, Buffalo Joe is waiting for some roadside assistance. We don't want to ever run out of fuel in an airplane. Airplanes do run out of fuel, but we don't want to run out of fuel. But he did run dry in his snow plane. Go run it again. Oh. <laughs> now Rod and Gordy have to come to the rescue. I had to just run to my house to my emergency oh, supply. After a 40-year absence, Joe and his pit crew want to get this engine revving in Yellowknife once again. Turn the pulse pump on. There you go. They prime the engine. You watch out for the top. That's yeah. Yeah, that was what we do. Yeah, he's got her going again. Okay, spare on, spare on, ox power on. It's pumping. Mags, it was there. Rod primes the engine with more gas. Clear. But once again... So we got a fuel stoppage. So I might as well just pull. Air in the gas line has brought this historic day to an end. We'll load her up, take her home. But Joe did bring a little history back to life today. Good for the younger generation to see what the transportation of that period was, would have been like. Eh? And he's learned one important rule about this unique vehicle before its next run. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll top up the tank. I might even take some extra fuel with me. But uh, of course, in something like that, there's no gas gauges. So you just got to guess at your fuel. All right, well, let's take her back to hang her. Buffalo C-46 flies the final miles back into Yellowknife after the mission up the valley. He had a misstep on the takeoff. Now Chris Staples has one more chance to show what he can do when he lands the plane. Take the friction off there. That's the mid power until we touch down. As hard as the 46 is to fly, it's far more brutal to land. So AJ's giving strict instructions. I say pull back, I want you to pull back. Do I say hold it? I want you to hold the attitude, not, not the, uh, the stick. Not your first hand. Keeping the big plane straight is the first challenge, but there's a bigger one. Landing with the right attitude, the plane's nose to tail angle relative to the ground. He has to pitch the nose up enough so he doesn't bounce and smack down onto the runway. 
Hey, don't start firing back quite yet. Keep her coming down. After lobbying hard to be here, this is Chris's last shot today to prove he deserves this seat. Okay, there you go. Start firing back. Keep her coming down, Ben. Keep her coming down, Ben. Start pulling back. Pull that right there. Pull that right there. Uh, control. Yeah, control. Good job, buddy. Thank you. Well, pretty good. Huh? I felt great. Uh, it's been a couple weeks, so I was getting itchy fingers there. And the next one will be better. He's coming along good. He's interested in the airplane. Likes the airplane. He's in the books all the time. So uh, you can't beat that. I think I really set the bar high for myself. Sure, I got all this time and everything, and I know I'm going to get it, but I can't drop the ball. I have to stay on top of, uh, of that airplane. After days of delay, the water bomber crew has flown across the Mediterranean to the island of Corsica. We got tanker 283 coming up behind us, and uh, Parker Chalker, boiler and fueler and route. You got a ground board? Here. After this quick refuel, the convoy will be just one stop away from Limoges, where they're still hoping to connect with their famous passenger, Bruce Dickinson. We're ready for taxi, runway 05 for the IFR to uh, Limoges. Right, uh, Charlie Yankee, never burn. Clear for takeoff, runway 05. Are set, are set. This 1,200 kilometer leg will take the two water bombers back to the European mainland. From Limoges, they'll continue on to Wales where the planes can finally undergo their much needed maintenance. We're just on approach uh, in the Limoges, France. Everything's running good, sun setting, we got a beautiful sunset. Looks like we're gonna be able to meet up with uh, Mike's friend Bruce and, uh, and everything's kind of falling into place. On approach, uh, hopefully I can remember requesting more. Check We've just landed in Limoges, France. Uh, this is our final stop uh, before meeting Bruce. Bruce is in Stockholm right now, en route to Paris to jump on a train to meet us here tomorrow. Oh, he's hurting. Make a, something out of you, one of these days. <laughs> these planes need to get to Wales, and the crew can't afford to wait around for Mikey's guest. Limoges, once we landed, it was just like, Phew. okay, it's not up to me no more. I got the airplanes here. It's up to Bruce now to, to make it here on time. Tomorrow, Mikey will find out if he can keep his promise to his hero. Bruce has sent me a message, he's on his way, so the boys are getting the airplane fueled up, so. For the last week, Mikey McBrien has been trying to make this moment happen. The arrival of a rock god. Bruce! Okay. We made it! We made it! Good. Right on. Got Euros and... Good to see you. And kroners and God knows what on me. Oh, right on. I've been all around Europe. Bruce Dickinson has zigzagged across the continent for his chance to fly on Buffalo CL215. We beeline it straight for the airplanes. Cool to have one of these in, in, uh, based in Cardiff for uh, launching off and putting things out. All we need is a few more forest fires. He's a big old duck. Nigel and Bruce. Hey, Nigel, how are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah. Hi. Bruce, our chief pilot, just hey, to mate. Bruce. How are you, mate? Nice to meet you, man. Cool. How hey, how are you, man? Good to meet you. I grew up with his music. To actually meet him was awesome. 
Okay, we're on our way. John's got his APU running. How are we going? Sounds like it. With the chance to try out a new airplane, this celebrity has some studying to do. Yeah, it's really going to be a good at plumbing to operate this airplane. What's not standard is the location of the switchery. Switchery, lots of switchery on it. Tickle it, tickle it, tickle it. All labeled. It's kind of like a job creation scheme for pilots, you know. Got a load meter for the pitot heat. That's cool. 2,000 pounds side. It's enough to get us to Cardiff. Yes, it is. Yeah. I hope so. Cool. If it's not, there's going to be a big splash. Yeah. Oh, we got a remote, so we can float. That's it. You all set, Mr. Dickinson? Well, vaguely. Clear for takeoff, 17 Alpha Yankee, November. We're ready to go. Europe. Actually, I'm going to let Justin here, and he'll fly with you. Cool. And then I'm going to go have a bite to eat in the back. Yeah, sure. After days of misconnections and frustration, Bruce will finally get a crack at this piece of Buffalo's heavy metal. Five by five, uh, Charlie Yankee, November. Bada boom, bada boom. How are you uh, doing? Cool. We're, uh, 126950, just chatting to the same gal same who gal. we uh, chatted to before. You enjoying this? Sometimes it looks like wrestling rubber snakes, but that's my fault. Oh, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> it felt a bit like driving a big flying London bus because you were so high up and it was so square and boxy, you know, and um, lots of interesting switchery. This is quite nice, just sitting in, you know, chilled out. Yeah, no, no stress. Eh? I can only imagine what it's like when you're actually operational and uh, whizzing around close to uh, bodies of water and things like that. Charlie Fox are out by Yankee November with you on. Are they being available? Okay, thanks, Bruce. Cheers, man. Yeah. As the ducks finally descend into Cardiff, the effort's all been worth it. Bruce got what he wanted to fly a legendary plane. Charlie Yankee Uniform Cardiff. Buzzer, clearly, about my three one. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Thanks, guys. Good to meet you. How's things? Oh yeah, Mikey. Hey, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice. Yeah, it's good. We're here. It's the end of uh, end of this chapter with Turkey, I guess. It's kind of funny. It's like all of a sudden. You never think it's going to end, and then all of a sudden, it's, that's it, done. Thanks to the Buffalo crew, the Ducks have a home for the winter.